So we'll start the session on chemical reaction and trace gas. Uh, Professor Dheeraj Garg is from uh, Shiv Nadar University, and uh, he is one of our esteemed uh, faculty partner of uh, Open Forum Team Fossi. So over to you, Professor Dheeraj Garg. Thank you very much, Payal, for the nice introduction. Uh, namaskar, everyone. Uh, welcome to this session. I hope so far you must have gained a lot of things uh, related to CFD. Uh, so today I will take a special case, uh, not a special in the sense, some extension of CFD, what you have done so far. It is related to passive scalars and uh, use of passive scalar as a chemical species uh, like tracer and as a chemical reaction. How can you incorporate? So I understand many of you are not from chemical engineering background. So the idea is th to give that uh, we can use some time uh, from the mechanical perspective, we want to look uh, how the mixing is going on in the system when there is a flow. And we want to look something like if there is a chemical reaction, how would you simulate it? So that's where uh, the usage of passive scalar come into picture. This is what I will take. So let's start and let's see this. Uh, so you must have seen these equations uh, in CFD. Uh, the first one, the equation that you are seeing in this, del rho phi by del t plus uh, divergence uh, rho phi u equal to divergence uh, sigma grad phi plus s phi. So in this, each term has its meaning. You must have gone through this part in CFD so far. The first is the transient time dependent term. So phi is any property which is per unit mass. Okay. So we are looking through first term the time variation. Uh, in the system that how this phi is changing with time. Then the second term is the convective term, how the thing is changing due to convection, due to the flow in the system, how it is changing with flow. The third term is related to the diffusion. So how uh, as the molecular process, the diffusion is taking place how the things are changing, how this property phi is changing due to diffusion in this system. Okay. And the last term is the source term. That means the, the, the property phi may be something which may be created, may be destroyed or being consumed within the system irrespective of convection, diffusion or time. So all these things we have assumed that they are occurring independently and not dependent on each other. So we are taking the total effect. So if you take the convective term on the right hand side, so convection, diffusion and the source term, that means you can track how any property phi is changing within the system with respect to time, which is the outcome of this. So as you can see, uh, so if you take any uh, control volume where we say, okay, we are looking for the mass um, uh, balance for population balance like uh, in uh, anything coming in minus out anything entering the control volume and it uh, plus anything leaving the volume plus generation in the system minus consumption of the system is equal to the accumulation of the uh, thing in the system. So same thing this will become like this. So incoming and outgoing are taking care through the convection and diffusion and generation and uh, consumption is taken through the source term S5. Now, this is the generalized way of writing this equation. So when phi is equal to 1, this will convert into the conservation of mass. When we take phi equal to u, u here is the one component of uh, velocity ux. Somebody, if to avoid confusion, you can see it as a ux. So for single term, this will be, it will easily convert into the uh, equation for conservation of momentum. And when phi is taken to be I, which is internal energy, you can derive easily the equation for the conservation of energy. So idea of generalization that in the, all the three systems, conservation of mass, momentum, energy, which is on which the whole CFD is based, we see the few generalized terms and we build our coding and calculation based on this generalized form. So this equation is that. Now, with this, this phi, as I have already said, phi is any property per unit mass. And this phi can be used as a passive scalar. So, so far, we have not taken 
anything else. So like if we want to use chemical species, how would you simulate where it will lie? Because conservation of mass leads to density. Momentum is velocity and conservation of energy will lead to the temperature form. Even though the temperature can also be taken as scalar and sometimes it is used as a scalar, passive scalar. So the natural question is asked, what is passive scalar? So much we have discussed what exactly is the physical meaning of passive scalar. So let's say any property is phi. Okay. So in a given volume, control volume, there is a property phi whose value you know for uh, given x, y, z and t. That means time and space, you know every property. It is varying in the time and space. And you know in the beginning, let's say. Now, if you are moving from one point to another, let's say x1, y1, z1 and at time t1 to x1, x2, y2, z2 and time t2. So, as you are moving along the line and you want to know what is the variation of phi with respect to this. So, you take the total derivative with respect to time. So, this is the derivation you will get that you need to differentiate this phi along the line with all respect to all the variables in space and time. So naturally you can see the total phi variation, variation of phi with respect to time will be coming, the contribution will be coming for the variation in the del phi by del x. That means as you are moving in, uh, so the variation in x, the gradient in x, gradient in y, gradient in z and in time. But along with gradient in phi, you will see another term del x by del t. Okay. Similarly, del phi by del y into del y by del t. So what is del y by del t and what is del x by del t? Somebody may say, what is this physically corresponds to distance by time? Velocity. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. So that means we are not only dependent on the gradient which may be existing, but also how fast we are moving in that direction. Now, this velocity dx by dt, when you are moving, when it is same as the substance velocity in which you are moving, okay? So, that will become, that dx by dt will become same as u. So, here the importance, what you should see is that the phi can have its own velocity of varying. So take an example that you are, so as you can see in different books also, take an example of a boat. If you are sitting in a boat and you are in a river, it's a flowing. So if the boat is driving its own mechanism and moving in the river, let's say against the flow or in any direction in the boat, in the river, so its velocity dx by dt, dy by dt, dz by dt would be different from the river, river flow rate, river velocity at that point. So, the velocity will be different and hence this dx by dt, dy by dt will correspond to the boat. But let's say that boat is still and is moved along the flow as the river is flowing downstream or wherever it is moving along with the river. So, if you want to calculate velocity, how it is moving, that means you can say that velocity uh, dx by dt is same as the local velocity of the river at that point, which is same as u, dy by dt is same as v, and dz by dt is same as w. So, only when the substance velocity in which the property is there and its own velocity becomes same, then it's become then the same derivative is called as substantial derivative. So here the meaning is that the scalar is not affecting local velocity. Okay, it's not affecting the surrounding velocity. It is moving along the local velocity. It is guided by the local velocity, and this is very important to understand because. When it, many times we do several experiments like you are dropping a ball in the water, let's say, or oil or fluid. Now, if the ball is large enough, it may affect the local flow rates, local uh, velocity distribution, local pattern. So, can you take it as a passive? Answer is no. Okay. 
because it will have its own velocities, its its own moment. So unless so this assumption is very important to be clarified that when a substance which you are taking does not affect the local flows. So the its own size should be should not be large enough that it affects the local velocities. Then only you can consider it as a passive scalar. Sir, I want to ask just one question. It depends yeah. on the flow field. Huh? It depends on the flow field where the air is flowing uh -huh. or some water is flowing. Uh -huh. So how I will connect with the physical world because it will take the like river is flowing. So uh -huh. river having some velocity. Right. And uh, we move with the boat and okay. we have some velocity with the river water. Yes. So how I will connect with this equation with this physical phenomena? I can't get it. Okay. So let's say you are having a boat and you are on the river. River have its own velocity pattern, right? Profile is there at every point, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, if the boat is not powered by its own mechanism and let's say it is light enough, okay, uh, so that it is following its, so let's say raft boats are there, let's say, and the flows are large. So how do you expect raft boat will move? It will move along the flow, right? Let's, I'm just simplifying the, although it will, it is large enough to say, but from that level, you can see the raft boat, if you are taking, if the raft boat, you are not rafting at all, it will move along the flow, right? Okay, sir. Okay. So if you want to determine how will it go, you simply see the flow of the river and you see how will it go, right? Yes, sir. If we stand outside the river, just yes. we are taking the local derivative. Ha ha. That is, yeah, of course, you are looking from outside the river. So you are seeing it, right? Yes, yes. So in that case, your velocity or the raft velocity, raft boat velocity, moment is same as the uh, flow of the river, right? In that case, yes, dx by dt of the raft and the u of the river will be same. Yes, sir. Now, if you say you start rafting. Okay, sir. So in that case, your velocity of the raft boat will be different from the river velocity. Yes, sir. That means this dx by dt for the raft is not same as u. So dx Before. by dt needs to be calculated separately. Okay. So that is what is the idea that when it is same as u, then it is considered as passive scalar. Then you do not have to calculate its velocity separately. The local velocity of the substance itself will be used automatically for this. And then it becomes a passive scalar. Then you can use that thing for visualization. So people have done what? They have dropped several plastic, uh, small, uh, uh, small plastic uh, uh, balls or toys. They can float on the river and they look how the river, has, a river is going from one point to another. So when they observe some plastic, the same plastic ball somewhere else, they say figure out, okay, it is. it must have come from this river because we have dropped it there and we are seeing. So this is the same idea here. So okay. that is right. Okay, sir. So just we are focusing on the velocity of river, like flow field. Main agenda of this equation is the flow field. Uh, Main agenda of this is that the flow field need not to be separate, calculated separately. The interaction oh. between the scalar and the field uh, and the substance uh, is, well, the interaction is neutral in the sense it is not affecting this. So that's why if you already have a flow field, you do not have yes. to recalculate it. Okay. Just we okay. combine two components. Ha. So that component directly comes from the flow field itself. And that's what you will see in tutorial that the flow field is already calculated and you are imposing the scalar. So that's why in post-processing, now new softwares have the technique of injecting particles, neutral particles to see yes, the yes, sir. So yes, flow field sir. also. Oh. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Should we move forward? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. So, feel, please feel free to contact uh, or ask question whenever you have doubt. Anna? Okay. So, we will take several cases which are practical importance and understanding to you. So, the first one is the trace and injection with uniform inlet velocity. Just to check to understand the concept one of the things that you can use a tracer. Now, tracer is a chemical species like dye, potassium iodide, uh, potassium iodide is there. So, there are several things you can use and you can actually simulate in the CFD. 
okay so how would you inject so you need to see which properties you are going to use in the system so this is the basic equation to start with okay we have taken now we have to see what are the things we need in this and what are the things we don't need so when we are taking any tracer let's assume that we that tracer should not be diffusive tracer so many of you must have done the a very simple experiment of showing the transition from laminar to turbulent using a die so in that die it's a natural assumption that the die is neutrally buoyant so that it remains uh, at the same horizontal level where it is injected and we also assume that it should not be diffusive otherwise it will uh, just like an ink diffuse through the fluid it will diffuse and it will cover the whole cross section so if we look from that so if you are not assuming it's any diffusion so which term should become zero can somebody guess or tell me divergence of the delta wave time right so the third term is the diffusion term so this will become zero to so make it zero we are not making grad phi but the sigma of that that which is corresponding to diffusion molecular diffusion will take it as a zero now in some software this value zero may not be taken directly it does not accept zero so what we do we take it value 10 to the power minus 30 or even smaller to overcome this issue sometimes they do not take absolute zero as the value so taking as minus 10 to the power minus 30 or even lesser this will do so this is practically becoming zero now since the tracer is there there is no there is no possibility of source term that means it cannot be generated and it cannot be consumed so the fourth term will also become zero so this will lead to this term so what we are looking in the uh, so if the variation is the uh, so if you are looking for an unsteady state condition then the only two terms, del phi, uh, the first term time variation, unsteady, and the convective term is there. And this is the equation which will be simulated. Now, in this case, there is a possibility your problem may be time independent. That means steady state. Then the first term will also become zero. So the only thing that will be solved by the solver is the second term that equal to zero. So it is up to you what type of analysis you want to do. So for a tracer, chemical tracer, so phi is the chemical species. So generally what we do, since it's a, a we are not interested in actual uh, concentration or actual values, we, uh, we denote it as a phi equal to 1. That means it's a maximum concentration and the minimum concentration would be 0. So we simply inject at the inlet, okay, with the boundary condition as uh, phi equal to 1 and we observe how it is varying with time and space across the control volume. Okay. So, if you are looking and interested in the uh, uh, time variation, how it is from the beginning of the injection to it reaches steady state, you can use this part where del by delta term is there. And if you remove this one, you will get the steady state analysis. Now, there is another interesting thing is that as you will know, as you are already aware, if you continue any transient analysis for long time and it is going to approach equilibrium, so ultimately you will get a steady state analysis. So there are sometimes two different ways of doing the things. Sometimes steady state uh, simulation is difficult. So people have used transient analysis and running for long time. So the last time step or longer time step whatever the solution you are getting is technically steady state solution. So it can be an engineering way of solving the same problem in a different way if the solver works easily in unsteady state. So far so good for this part. Sir, I have one question. Yes. So in the last equation, so if there is no transient component, right? so that means the distribution of pressure will be just equivalent to the distribution of velocity, right? I mean, qualitatively is it not the scenario distribution of the tracer you will get in steady uh -huh. state context uh -huh. it will be quite similar to the distribution of your velocity wave uh, maybe may not be not necessarily okay the, that's what is the thing but so it may give that similar thing you may be visualizing it should mm -hmm. actually follow the same thing so yes in some cases, you may get that thing. 
in another mm-hmm. case this may not be so for example let's say when you are injecting since it is the uh, local velocity so let's say you are doing steady state analysis or any it doesn't matter let's say they are dead pockets so what will happen when you inject the velocity uh, when you inject the tracer so it will cover those area according to the velocity like absolutely like you are saying so if there are dead pockets the tracer may move may not move in those pockets so that's where you can realize you can see okay so okay. yes so sometime it may be similar to that what you are saying absolutely correct Okay. So the same technique okay. actually is used for visualization also. So now okay. we have visualization techniques. So post processing, if you are looking, so same thing can be used there also, without actually injecting tracer like that. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So, uh, sir, I have a question. Yes. Uh, sir, what is the objective of uh, this dye injection? What right. do we need to find? Right. So. the thing is sometime uh, you want to visualize how mixing is occurring is there any dead pocket in the geometry how the things are moving from one point to another you want to visualize what is happening inside right but as you told uh, there is no diffusion ha huh, there is no diffusion so you are looking only the convective aspect so so, so like say in the the bigger size equipment that means the flow equipments are there Bigger size, industrial scale. You want to see how the pattern of mixing is there, how the things are moving from one point. So you are sometimes only interested in convective aspect because the system is large enough where you can safely neglect the diffusion. Okay. So if you want to see how the things will move, then you simply have to use this part. So if you are simulating, if you want to simulate mixing, let's say you. are bringing two different chemical and you want to see how fast it will move and how they are mixing together then this is the equation actually in the background where diffusion is not considered there is no source term so you are simply simulating mixing right so yeah. now the application is many people bring like okay we have devised this thing this has improved mixing now how would you look at that if you want to evaluate so mm. this is where you can do that you can take a scalar at the inlet you inject it okay now in that case to see what people do is they inject partially because you want to simulate mixing if you are already giving the complete bore injection then everywhere is the tracer so you inject partially so let's say 30% cut or some particular portion of at some point where injection would be there and you you see how the tracer is now moving along the flow and at the end ultimately how much it is uh, appearing across the cross section and then you can evaluate how the mixing is occurring throughout okay. similarly you can use it for seeing the mixing in heat exchanger see how heat exchanger so there may be so that is the additional complexity you can use see how heating or cooling is uh, affecting mixing in a given system Right. Or open heat exchanger. Open, because this this is the equation. So if you see temperature is there, so the the it is coupling with the temperature is right. Rho density is changing with temperature or not, and mm-hmm. U is changing through the mass t- momentum transfer is coming from there. So automatically mm-hmm. it will come. So okay. So another thing I would say, as you might have seen, uh, any system as we have seen previous equations, unless density and viscosity are changing. the systems are considered decoupled decoupled means they can be sold individually okay so they not to need not to be sold simultaneously but if the density is changing and the viscosity is changing that means they are coupled system that means you have to sold them simultaneously you cannot evaluate them independently okay so in let's say there is a chemical reaction or there is a heat exchanger temperature is changing now if, by because of change in temperature density and viscosity is are changing significantly then you cannot assume that the profile velocity profile would remain for isothermal condition and for non isothermal it will remain same so it will change accordingly so far is it clear related to this part 
uh yes sir so for two stream are mixing so are we going to find entrainment ratio or kind of physical quantity so uh, what i so in this uh, uh, particular uh, today's topic we are trying to make you understand how to do it how to do the injection of tracer then the application like entrainment you want to do those thing you can easily extend to your requirement once you are aware how to do it on the code then mm. you everybody can do it for their own in, interest okay yes sir so that's the idea okay let's move further so the another important aspect and uh, practical uh, application of this is the residence time distribution so in this we have we will be showing in the tutorial with the parabolic inlet velocity parabolic uh, inlet velocity is basically corresponding to the laminar flow but it can be done with the uh, turbulent flow too so the what is residence time distribution residence time distribution is exactly is for the uh, visualizing how uh, good is the mixing inside the how the temp uh, the time distribution of different particle is uh, varying within the system okay so for that so same equation is applicable the except that the boundary condition now would be the inlet velocity should not be flat but the parabolic velocity profile okay that's the only difference so the residence time distribution is special application of the same um, mixing characteristic with the distribution velocity distribution at the inlet should be fully dollar flow so if the flow is laminar it should be parabolic if it is a uh, turbulent accordingly a uh, uh, flow profile can be given at the inlet so uh, is anybody of you aware of residence time distribution concept yes sir okay that's good so one of the important thing is residence time distribution concept is always a transient analysis so del pi delta term would always be there so in that what you do you inject at the beginning full bore so here the injection is always full bore phi is always 1 and at the outlet you look first appearance of the phi uh, if the value of y is changing from 0 to and how it is changing to 1 depending on the continuous injection or impulse injection so that's a specific uh, example of this so how uh, so if you continue to give phi equal to 1 maintaining uh, in the code this is the continuous injection step in uh, or step input if you apply uh, the delta function that phi equal to 1 and in the next step it becomes zero it will in, uh, incorporate the impulse injection so far so good sir i want to ask one question yes so there is a phi if we yes. take the phi value equals to 1 Phi so how do we will uh, calculate uh, the continuity equation or some other equation because phi value is varying. Yes. So I am not connected. If you okay. elaborate. So on. as I said, since this is passive scalar, so your flow distribution, pressure distribution, everything is already established. So they are not touched, and you don't require to touch them at all. You are only solving for phi. Is this okay, clear? so yes, the thing yes. is like you are running initially for the uh, velocity distribution you are getting you are running simulation without phi let's say no chemical injection before no tracers you are not simulating anything except that you are running for your velocity profile so once it is obtained now you are taking the last simulation as the initial condition for this that means it is already settled you are already having obtained the final distribution so when the system will solve it will not solve for pressure and velocity because it is already solved and it is not getting affected because of the injection of phi because phi is passive scalar had the phi not been passive scalar that means it will affect your local velocity that means it will affect your pressure calculation again okay sir okay so you do not need to worry about the pressure and velocity since it's already there you are only looking at the injection of the tracer and it is only solving for phi oh, if i am uh, injection velocity taking 1 meter per second 
whatever it may be, whatever velocity profile is there, you just have to impose it there. And because uh, there is already mentioned the equation of pressure and velocity, then by default, I am taking the phi equals to one meter per second. No, no, phi is not velocity. Phi is phi could be any property. Phi is not velocity. It is u which is velocity. So phi is general property which is like. So let's say okay, 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 okay. So I got the point. So let's say generally what is phi is generally let's say chemical species. So we talk about the molar concentration. So let's say phi is potassium iodide. So you say okay, the molar concentration is ten mole per liter, something like that. So rho phi is ten mole per liter. Okay. So now the thing is, you have an option to solve phi as the concentration value. Yes, sir. Or you can simply give the phi as one, where phi equal to one correspond to ten mole per liter. So what if you find any in any of the mesh, you find phi equal to point five. So what should be the value of concentration in that? Half. Half of the total concentration, right? Yes, sir. So that way you can simplify. That's why we want to simplify the task. So normal cases, when see we have no reaction, nothing else is there, where the we are only interested in the distribution. So phi yes, equal sir. to one will suffice. Where phi is equal to one correspond to the maximum concentration, whatever it may be, and phi equal to zero means no concentration, and the correspondence between phi concentration and the phi one to zero value is linear. That means one correspond to C node, zero correspond to C, point five will correspond to point five C node. Okay, 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 sir. I got the point, sir. Thank right. you, sir. Thank you. So okay. now we are. Well, that does not affect our calculation. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, good. So let's move to the next. So the next is the case we will take to make the understanding half bore injection with zero diffusion. Okay. So in this, what we'll do in the half bore injection is same equation like the previous case. That means del phi uh, del by del t and the convective term and we will see this that okay if we are injecting half bore and there is no diffusion what do you expect the liquid to move how should it move and we are taking the flow to be laminar so this is the idea that you want to visualize that if we are giving only let's say upper half or lower half you are injecting a tracer and there is no diffusion so there should be how do you expect the interface to be can you visualize there is a straight tube? Let's say stratified. Speak. Pardon me? A stratified interface. No, the, it will not be stratified. It will be sharp interface because diffusion is not there. Uh, so, okay, I should have given the background. So, let's say there is a cylindrical flow. Cylinder is there. And there is a laminar flow. So, in the laminar flow, uh, as you are aware, it's a parabolic velocity profile. So in the lower half, we are injecting lower or upper half, we are injecting the tracer. So since the tracer is non-diffusive, okay, so will it diffuse to the lower half or the other half in which it is not injected? It will not uh, diffuse, I think. Uh, it will not diffuse. The thing is, the idea of showing is that laminar flow is stratified flow as somebody rightly pointed out. <coughs> so there is no radial mixing because of convection. So the only way it can mix radially is through diffusion. And that's what we want to show you that what is the importance of diffusion. So if you are injecting a tracer in the one half of the cylindrical flow with the laminar flow, and if we are simulating as no diffusion, we will see it will simply inject it and will cover the one half of the cylinder without even moving to another half. So there will be sharp interface of the tracer at the middle with no diffusion. But on the other hand, if there is a diffusion, so what should happen in that case, if the dye or the tracer is now having diffusion significant enough, then what will happen? So turbulence may be dominant. Turbulence become dominant or see it will not affect your velocity profile. What if, what I am trying to say, 
that when you are injecting tracer and it can diffuse also. So what will it do is in a laminar flow, in the cylindrical flow, if you are injecting into one half of the cylinder, because of diffusion, the interface, interface will not, not remain sharp because it will see that other side there is no, no tracer is there. So it will start diffusing to the other side. And if you continue to stay it for longer, it may cover the whole cross section also. And that is the basic idea of using in the micro reactors. Why we are, many of you are aware of micro reactor and micro devices. Many of you are aware of that. Yes, sir. So why do we use micro reactor and micro devices? Sir, we are working on the micro channel where we calculate the bubble diffusion. Right. So the thing is, in the micro channels on those devices, we are people are now working the radial cross section is in microns or milli. Why we do that? So that the diffusion in radial direction becomes significant. The contribution of radial direction diffusion in radial direction becomes significant. And you can see here also in the in the tutorial that most of the time in the micro reactor we have laminar flow so we do not expect the laminar in the laminar flow the radial diffusion uh, radial mixing but still mixing is quite good in radial direction because of diffusion okay so the thing question is how would you incorporate diffusion so this brings to this part since the source term is zero now we have the convection term and also the diffusion term so these three terms needs to be there in the equation, in the code, and that will take care of the diffusion part. So having this incorporated in this third part will include the diffusion. Okay? Yes. Okay, I am seeing two questions, one from the Vipin, uh, by phi equal to one in equation, this becomes mass conservation equation for tracer. Okay, so this part, uh, what I was telling actually in the beginning, by taking phi equal to one, the only thing I am trying to imply that and this is the simplified way of uh, actually that is a simplifying way of converting the equation into coding that you can convert the code uh, in the if you are writing code uh, you can take a modular approach as you will see in the open form also where you know that there are common elements so they can easily be converted. In, uh, so you don't need not to write different codes for uh, implementing conservation of mass, momentum, energy. They can all be implemented using similar modules. Okay, so those parts are there. So phi does not mean that when I take phi equal to one, uh, it will uh, become conservation of mass. What I was saying is that it was a simplified way of writing uh, all the three conservation laws. And this is the technique to simplify the coding that you do not need to write separate code for conservation of mass, separate code for sun, conservation of momentum, separate code for conservation of energy, but rather you can use the uh, common terms and accordingly you can convert and modulate slightly to accommodate all the different conservation laws. Is this clear, Vipu? I hope this is clear. And second is from Sibin. If we are giving continuous injection at a point in a flow field, eventually the tracer will cover the entire flow field ride. Exactly, absolutely. And uh, this exactly is the point in the RTD, residence time distribution. So the moment it covers the whole channel completely, it, you will get uh, phi equal to one throughout the cross section. And that's where you need to stop your RTD analysis. So that exactly is the point. The RTD analysis is always transient. It cannot be steady state because eventually it will cover the whole uh, cross section throughout the system. So you won't see any variation. So RTD analysis, residence time distribution analysis, always a uh, transient analysis. And it continues till, as you have rightly figured out, till it covers the whole thing. Because beyond that, you won't see any variation. So very good question. Thanks to bring in. Uh, sir, one, one more question. So we yeah. have to give continuous injection, right? Not pulsating injection. 
ट so when you are specifying phi equal to 1 it means the tracer is coming continuously at the same concentration unless okay. you give some formula to change it with time that after this it change to this or this otherwise it will continuously uh, coming injecting at the same concentration so um, so we have to add tracer like you said uh, 10 moles per liter like like that uh-huh. initially. initially we had to give a concentration value so that's what i said uh the thing is if the, there is no reaction if there is no reaction and there is no lo- non linear term in terms of let's say diffusion so phi equal to 1 is a good way to overcome the issue of absolute values of concentration because there is a linear correspondence between phi equal to 1 and c phi equal to c node so let's say the c node is 0.002 mole per liter right okay so there is Or it's a difficulty in getting the data. Okay. Well, you are putting point zero zero two, but putting it as phi equal to one is easy to visualize the thing. Anyway, okay. whenever phi equal to one is there, point zero zero two, it means point zero zero two. When phi equal to point five, it means point zero zero one. Okay. So it's your choice. You can feed it as point zero zero two, and it's your choice. Feed it as a one till there is no reaction. In the reaction. Okay. absolute values are important okay but non reaction non uh, that is not there then this will work perfectly fine this system will work perfectly fine if you actually need some values you can always multiply the whole values of phi from 0 to 1 by the c not you will get in terms of c concentration okay so far so good yes sir okay so now let's introduce to the chemical reaction so when you want to introduce chemical reaction many of you have studied chemistry basic chemistry so we just how can you use this passive scalar for introducing chemical reaction okay so in the chemical reaction what you already know is let's say ra equal to minus kca this is the basic a a is reacting to b giving you ra equal to rate of reaction is minus kca okay k is the kinetic rate coefficient c is the concentration now here it's a linear uh, variation so how would you implement this in the batch reactor so here you look now phi is the reactant okay so you want to simulate batch reactor so since it's a batch reactor there is no flow so the convective term will become zero now again we are saying it's a homogeneously mixed so diffusion term will also become zero so ultimately this will reduce to this form so if you look closely if you replace this term uh, with the reaction uh, concentration so the ra term if you remember dca by dt so left term will become dca by dt and the right term it will become minus kc so what i am trying to say is you will rederive the same equation from this by an <laughs> removing convective and diffusion term and this way you can simply simulate dca by dt equal to minus kca or any complicated reaction term equation that is there on the right hand side so that part will become the source term and the left hand side is the reaction rate term so this is how you can simulate so if you want to implement reaction so what we do is we go in a step by step manner first of all we need to implement like this so source term we have to define and the source term would be the reaction term okay and we make the velocity zero we make the diffusion zero and we actually simulate only for the single mesh because we are now not looking for the convection and diffusion and we simply integrate and we want to verify whether we are getting the same result as the result would have come theoretically so when this is coming correct we accept the result that now it is the coding is correct for the batch reactor we want now want to integrate for plug flow so that moves to the next is the plug flow so in plug flow what happens is the velocity profiles 
remains flat throughout. This is a theoretical concept. So, plug flow is the batch reactor in the motion. So, that means time, time aspect, what we were looking there in time, here it becomes in the space. So, if there is a cylindrical flow from left to right, if the velocity pattern, uh, velocity inlet velocity is flat, so if the length is let's say one meter and the flat velocity profile is one meter per second, so every particle which is entering at the left will exit at the right at the one after exactly one second. So residence time in the system will be absolutely one second for each particle. So this is the next level of integration. May you want to check? Okay, S5 we have integrated correctly for single cell. Now I want to check it for my flow condition. Now again, diffusion term will be neglected. Okay. And convection term will be introduced. So we, this is where the complexity will come. So we want to see, is it working with the plug flow or not? And, and am I getting any uh, correct result or not? Because in plug flow, I know what should, if based on the residence time, I know what should be the value at the outlet. So this is the second level of uh, movement of implementing the chemical reaction. So S5 is there. Now we added convection also. So we have, so from uh, time derivative term and source term, we have added the convection now. So once we are able to do this, once we are able to get this form that it is getting correct result, now you can go for actual condition. So again here we have shown uh, one uh, tutorial for you that there is a reaction only in the upper half or one half with the source term, but there is no diffusion. So in from this equation, what we are going to do is this portion alone. So if you remember, we have taken the half bore injection with diff zero diffusion, but now there is a source term. So now understand one thing is that for source term, when I say for reactant, it will be minus and for the products, it will be positive. Okay. So this is the equation that will be implemented for this. And again, since it is with zero diffusion, we should not expect anything diffusing from the one half to another. But if there is a diffusion, then we are actually impl implementing this whole equation. And we should see that as the reaction is proceeding, there should be some diffusion also. And how will it affect your overall uh, changes that you will see in the tracer? The only thing I am saying the equation remains same. This whole equation remains same. But <coughs> using different parts, it adds different meaning and you can use it for different physical conditions. Then the last module, uh, the, the last tutorial that we will give you, that you will do is scalar 1 and scalar 2 gives scalar 3. What is that meaning? Let's say A plus B giving you C. That means two reactants are there. And this is the very much important condition for chemical reaction. People are dealing that you add two chemicals, you want to mix and you want to react and see how things are changing. There can be complex reaction. Okay. So earlier you were looking only at adding A and B and mixing alone. Let's say there's no reaction. So whatever you have done previously, absolutely useful for you. But if you want to go one step ahead and you want to simulate reaction, so there is a mixing, there is a reaction happening. So the same equation you have used, now you are using two scalars. So A and B are the reactants, so their source term would be negative. And scalar 3 is a product, their source term would be positive. And the same equation will be applicable for 1, 2 and 3. So in this case, Depending if you are, let's say in tutorial, we have taken upper one half for the scalar one, one half for the scalar two. So the boundary conditions, what will be the boundary condition? So let at the inlet. So phi A will be one for one half. Phi B in that half will be zero. Phi C in that half will be zero. Phi A in the second half where B is injected will be zero. Phi B will be one and phi C will be zero. So technically you are injecting A from one half and B from second half and C you are not injecting, it is getting produced with, due to the reaction. And you will see the two cases with or without diffusion also. You will see how things are changing accordingly. So that's all for from my side.
for the chemical reaction and this. Uh, is there any question further? You please feel free to ask. Sir, uh, if we want to find the mixing type in a cylindrical reactor, you can say. Okay. So, so we have to give pressure at a, from at a particular point, right? Continuously inject. Okay. And uh, then the initial concentration will be, uh, how will you quantify it? Uh, your final concentration will, should be maximum, right? So, how would you? So, in that, see, again, since you are not looking for reaction, right? Only yes, mixing, yes. Yeah, mixing, mixing, mixing intensity. So, again, you can take 5 equal to 1. Okay. Simply. So, so it doesn't uh, matter, you inject 5 equal to 1 and you can calculate beforehand, okay, I am injecting this thing. So, let's say if you are adding only a small amount. Okay. Right? Uh, how will you quantify that small amount? That's my point. Uh, that's what I am coming to. So, there are two things. So, one is continuous injection. Okay. So, when you are injecting continuously, as one person already pointed out, Ultimately, everything will be reached to the maximum concentration, right? Yeah. So that means in the physical way, you know that if you are continuously adding something in a given volume, it will reach to the same as the maximum concentration. So the yes. final steady state condition would be 5 equal to 1 everywhere, right? Yes, yes. Right. Now the second part is, let's say you add small amount. Okay. Okay. You add, add just a small amount and you want to see how it is mixing and what will be the final concentration, yes. right? Yes. Sir. Right. So let's yes. say a simple basic calculation. Let's say there's a 10 liter tank and mm. you add one liter. Let's say nine liter tank and you had one liter of one mm. concentration. Mm. So in the initial, in nine liter, there was zero concentration and you yes. had one liter with a C node. Okay. What is if they're completely mixing? What should be the final concentration? It will be one Nine by liter. ten. One by ten, yeah. Right. Ah. So if I go with five equal to one, one okay. liter of that, and mm. I know nine liter I'm adding. Okay. So I know by analytical calculation that the final complete mixing, if there it is there, the five everywhere should become point one. Okay. Yes, that yes. is the desirable condition I am looking at. Yes, yes. Now, when you inject 5 equal to 1 with the similar quantity you inject uh, and make it accordingly, what will happen is 5 will vary throughout. Somewhere mm -hmm. it will be 0, somewhere it will be 1. It will vary from 0 to 1 various places. Now, it is your choice mm -hmm. where to stop and you can track the quantity, how it is changing and where mm -hmm. to stop. So, it may reach 0 0.1 everywhere after a certain time or it may take infinite time. So, yeah. based on your analysis or requirement, you can stop anywhere with reaching to this value, it taking this much time and that. Again, second part, if you are taking tracer to be diffusive or non-diffusive, it may again affect your final. Because if the tracer is diffusing, then also the final concentration would be 0 0.1 only. Only thing no. is the mixing time will change because now diffusion is also assisting in complete mixing. No. Time will be less. Right? Haan, okay. So time will be less. So point I'm saying is, how would you know the what will be the final? You can calculate beforehand. Okay, okay. And the thing is, you can verify your simulation that it should not be more than that uniformly throughout or less than that. Okay. It is not physically possible. Okay. So if something is happening like that, that means something numerically wrong or okay. some errors you have made somewhere. So, one should also be uh, aware of the thing that you, uh, you should not see phi should not go to more than one in case there is no generation or consumption. So, when there is no source term, phi cannot go more than one. And so, this is the another important aspect of using phi equal to one because in the case when there is no reaction, no source term, because then you easily track that phi can never be more than one and phi can never be less than zero. Because okay. when you use absolute values, you may be tricked thinking that phi may change. Okay, 0 0.002 we took and now it is 0 0.0021, maybe somewhere something something like that generated something. But phi equal to 1 and 0, the importance of no source term is that it can never physically be more than 1 for any reason and less than 0. The only possibility is there is some error or some numerical diffusion or some numerical error. 
So that way you can easily figure out something is going wrong in the system or not. Your calculations are going in the right direction or not. Okay. Anybody else? Any other question? Uh, hello. Uh, I have one question. Yeah, uh, sir, it is uh, related to application. Uh, can we also simulate corrosion activities in open form? It, if not, then what is the, uh, based on your experience, what are the software that is available in the market where we can simulate the corrosion? So I will uh, give a generalized answer. So anything yes. that you want to simulate is ultimately you are reducing to mathematical model. Okay. Right. So let's say you want to simulate corrosion. Somebody wants to uh, simulate acoustics. People see it as a non-related at all. But at the end of the day, what you are doing in this software, it's a solver, right? Yes. What it is solving? It's solving ODE or PDE, partial yes. differential equation. Now, what is that PDE or ODE corresponding to? Some conservation law, some mathematical model. Yes. So, the idea of open form or any other software that you will use, okay, freeware or commercial, they all are solving the equations. Hmm. So, okay. if you if you are saying it's a corrosion, you want to say, okay, fine, but how would system know it's corrosion? That means yeah. you are writing some mathematical, mathematical model, equation. Yes. So, the moment you have equation, so okay. you can always use this software or another. Okay. The only difference open form compared to another is that you can write your own equation if that is not existing earlier. Hmm. Okay. And other software, what they do? So they make module like in console. They offer this module, but at the back end of the module, they have written equations for the same thing. It okay. becomes user friendly because they have done the equation modeling part. But if and you have to pay for it, yeah, but you right. don't have money to pay for the same. You can write down the those same equations, use open form, convert those equation into that coding part, and run it. As simple as that. Okay. So it is not that I am saying it's restricted. The only thing is you have to first figure out the mathematical form. You must have the mathematical model and then you can go ahead. So there is absolutely no restriction. Only thing is you have to work out what is that mathematical form you need to solve. Okay, clear. You can do that. You can do that. Okay. Right. So benefit is that they are so, so for certain cases, uh, some modules are inbuilt. So that may be of help that for this, you need not to write your whole model yourself. That is the only difference uh, different software offer. They have some inbuilt features. So for particular case, you don't have to uh, write your own equation, complete setup for yourself. You just take and refer to that. That may simplify the thing. Otherwise, you can write your own equation. That's the only thing. So, as you will use open form, you will realize uh, you can always check uh, on the internet whether somebody has already worked in this area in open form. So, it is generalized for everyone whosoever want to use for uh, open form for the particular usage. You can check it online that if somebody has worked on that. If yes, you can refer to that work and uh, may see what are the similarity or differences. But if that is not there, don't get disheartened. You just write down the equation, see the mathematical model available with you. You can write the same thing in the uh, open form code. It allows you complete flexibility that you can write the same code in the open form and you can run it. And you can always take FOSI help to uh, help you in solving it out. Any other question, please? Okay, so if there's no further question, I just uh, tell there will be a tutorial session uh, by John. Uh, he has made several modules as we have discussed. He will take it up one by one. One of the important aspect is that uh, the flow profiles are already obtained. So the as we have already discussed, since it's a passive scalar, you don't need to uh, work out on the velocity profile directly. I mean, you can obtain them beforehand also. So in all the cases, you are not solving for velocity. So the last velocity profile is taken as the initial solution for the current case. And you're only solving for phi. So I hope uh, you will understand much better when you will go through the tutorials. And in all of them, you can play with the values and see the differences that are coming. That will give you much better idea of the concepts. They are simple tutorials, 
but you can play with the values like kinetic rate coefficient source term you can play you can change the power of the source term and you can play and see different results that's the idea that you can easily play with the things with the same structure you can implement different physical aspects so like tracer reaction and you can make the things as complicated as possible to uh, simulate the real world problem so with that i conclude my talk okay so with this we conclude the theory session of uh, of this uh, section of the workshop uh, okay then thanks pyle uh, please thank you so much sir